Today's video is all about how we get from an equation to deciding which method is best for monitoring that rate of reaction. Let's have a look at some examples. Here are the four reactions that we're going to be working with today. Um, if you haven't yet checked out the last video, which was all about the different methods for measuring rate of reaction, I strongly recommend that you do that before watching this video. In this video, you see that I've given all of my equations their state symbols. So the S in brackets stands for solids, the L liquids, the G is a gas, and then the AQ means aqueous or dissolved in water. In equation number one, we can see that we're going from a solid and an aqueous thing on the left-hand side to an aqueous and a gas on the right-hand side. Now, in my head, I've got these sirens going off saying, oh, if you're making a gas, you should always be looking at collecting that gas in a gas syringe. So if you're making a gas and you have no gases on the left-hand side of the equation, then the first thing that you should think about doing is monitoring with a gas syringe. It's super easy and it means that we can measure how much gas is produced as the reaction goes on. Reaction number two doesn't make our life quite so easy. We can see we've got two aqueous things on the left and two aqueous things on the right. So state symbols are not helping me out in this case. Instead, I'm gonna to have to look for something else that might be able to help me to see this reaction proceeding. In this case, I can see I've got halogens, and I know that halogens are colored. So the chlorine on the left-hand side of the equation is kind of like a paley, greeny color, whereas the bromine that's being produced on the right is gonna be more of an orangey-brown color. So what I can do is I can monitor how quickly the color changes from that pale green to that orange-brown, and that'll tell me how fast the reaction is going. In this third reaction between calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid, I can see that I've hit the jackpot again because it's making a gas on the right hand side. And making a gas always means whack on a gas syringe and everything will be fine. In this case, because it's carbon dioxide, I could also monitor the change in mass of the reaction because carbon dioxide is such a dense gas that as it escapes the vessel, the container itself will decrease in mass. So we could also use that method to monitor this reaction. In this reaction between sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid, you can see that again, you're making a gas. So immediately you might think that you can use a gas syringe. But actually, in this case, the sulfur dioxide is really soluble in water. So that means that it will dissolve in the solution itself before it even really makes it into a gas syringe. So in this case, that option is off the table. If this were to come up in a question for you, you wouldn't be expected to know this. The exam board would probably tell you in the question that you couldn't collect the gas for this reason. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna monitor the appearance of the sulfur precipitate. You can see the solid appearing at the end of the reaction. So if you've got a solid appearing or a precipitate appearing, what we can do is we can monitor how long it takes for the solution to become opaque so that we can't see through it anymore. And to do this, we're normally using the disappearing cross method, where we put a little cross on a piece of paper and our vessel on top, and we look down to see how long it takes for us to not see the cross anymore. So this was some examples of different ways that we can use equations and state symbols to help us work out which method of measuring rate of reaction is gonna be best for our reaction itself. 